Now I'm going to speak on only a few things. A lot. If you've been in the academy, you'll already understand a lot of what I'm about to go into. It's only going to be a few moments. But I have to deal, unfortunately, I tried to not deal with it for a good minute. But I'm forced to deal with this flat earth theory. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not for those who are bringing this doctrine. It's for the younger people who are coming into the truth. And anything they learn now, online or otherwise, initially is their truth. Mm -hmm. And if it seems rational and makes sense to them, they'll believe it. That's the only reason I'm going to talk about this flat earth thing. Now, I'm going into the scriptures, but before I go into the scriptures, because the scriptures, the Bible, and the Holy Scriptures, mind you, have nothing to do with no flat earth theory. So I'm going to go into some of the history of it. That the Gentiles believed and understood. All right? And then I'm going to the scriptures to show you what the earth is. All right? It's quite simple. First and foremost. Now, before I go there, Elder Lawyer, get Colossians 2 and 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Read. Beware. Beware means what? Be warned. Read. Lest any man. Lest any man. Spoil you through sp philosophy. Spoil you through philosophy. And vain deceit. So that means someone can spoil you through philosophy. Philosophy to you. With a, de with a deceitful agenda. So deceit is not letting you know exactly. What their true agenda is. But they can philosophy you in a way that can prepare you to receive something that's really against your core belief. Beware lest any man spoil you through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. Philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. And not after Christ. So obviously, these philosophies would move us from the understanding of who? Christ. And Christ came to do the will of his what? His Father. So obviously, it will dissuade you from the understanding of the Most High and ultimately his work. Right? So now... Let's first start there. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Right? I need y'all to check this out real quick. Now. On your screen, for those who can't see this. There's a man on your screen by the name. Let me give you him a name. His name is Al Baruni. His name is Al Baruni. Okay. He's from Iran. And Al Baruni is a Persian philosopher. He lived between 973 AD and 1048 AD. Now, who are we looking at here? We're looking at Al-Biruni, the Persian philosopher, who was bringing the information at that time on the flat earth or about the flat earth. So at this time, this had nothing to do with anything that came from 
the Hebrews. So why was the Persians, who are the modern day Iranians, talking about a flat earth? Now I'm going here first. Why? Because we have to see the ideas that, that were out there that leads us to where Satan is trying to take his people. Everything right now is Asian or what you would call Persian mysticism, cosmology, and it's their religion of the ancients of Asia is now being promoted over all ideologies today when it comes to religious beliefs. You notice that. Everyone is talking about yoga, Hinduism, Buddhism, meditation. You think that's a coincidence? Now, all of a sudden, the new hot button topic is flat earth now. I'm going to show you how slick this is and how they're actually trying to really aim towards the people in the Bible buying into the, this theory. Because in order for it to get any type of, of relevance or any type of substance, the Gentiles always needed the Hebrews' agreement on it. To give it some authority. That's why do you think Muslims today will go into the Bible to try to pull out Muhammad? They need an authority with knowledge from the beginning to give it credence. So, of course, they're going to go into the Bible to try to give it credence. Why? Because they're trying to convince us that it exists. Right? Now all of a sudden this flat earth thing is the new topic. Remember at one time it was the lunar moon Sabbath? And then that went away and no one is talking about that? Mm -hmm. Remember before that it was the zeitgeist and no one is talking about that now? But only the unlearned people who don't have scriptural basis, who don't have a fundamental foundation can be taken. My issue is that people who are supposed to follow the Bible, who have the authority of the Bible, can look at this flat earth theory and say, you know what? It could be something to it. Who knows? They lied, they lied to us about everything else. So who knows? So now, this is how they try to push the flat earth thing now. They try to push the flat earth by saying, the powers that be, the Illuminati, don't want you to know it's a flat earth. If they do it this way, then everyone that's against the New World Order powers automatically sway towards believing it. <laughs> you see? So now here's another device they're using. And now none of these people are actually going into the history of it. But we're about to today. So that you can, guess what? And you can actually have the information and weigh it yourself. And if you believe it's a flat earth or a round earth or whatever the case is, that's on you. But this is where it comes from, what we're about to show you. Here's the origin of where it comes from. Now, when I walk down the street, I'm walking on a flat earth. So that's good enough for me. I'm glad the earth is not round where I'm falling off of it or flat. So, I mean, I'm, it, it ain't to the point where there's a curve and i got to walk sideways. I thank the Most High that when I walk, the earth is flat. I don't need no three-hour philosophy to make me feel that, okay, someone lied to me about the shape of the earth and all these things. So that's why the last couple of weeks when people have been bringing this, I said, man, listen, I don't care what shape the earth is, because I know this heaven and earth is going to pass, and the Most High is going to make a new heaven and earth. So that's, that's the stance I've been taking, but I'm starting to see that be, because we've been avoiding it, because it's nonsense, I'm going to tell you the truth, it's straight nonsense, and that's why I didn't want to deal with it. Because we, are, we, we, has, we, we avoided it, people are taking that as if it must be true. 
that we can't actually resolve this and break it down, so I'm going into it now. Okay, well, I need you to go into Al Biruni, the Persian philosopher that was bringing forth the flat earth and what religion he was following. I'm going to start off, Elder Lawyer, and we're going to go where all you all can go. I need you all to go to Wikipedia, you out there, and type in flat earth on Wikipedia. Right? Now, just to read what's out there. Right? Now, for those who don't know what a flat earth is, probably your first time hearing this, or probably don't care, because I didn't care either. It's, it's a total mess. And I, I wouldn't surprise if Messer, the same guy that I'm talking about now, and he want to bring black Hebrews out, would bring his mess over here too. It says, what here, lawyer? Flat Earth. Up in the top. Now, they, let me explain what they claim the Flat Earth is. Mm -hmm. the, they claim the Flat Earth, I got some pictures here. So I can, let's see, bring this out here. Now I got this one in, in, in particular so we can tear this down. Because this is how they try to link it in with the Bible here. They say that the Earth is really flat, <coughs> circular or square, whatever the case is. And they're claiming that it's ice around it, on the outside of it, and that it's a disk floating in space with a clear dome over it, like the Truman Show you might have seen with Jim Carrey. There's a dome over it, and there's a flat pancake earth floating in space. A half circle, really, or a flat thing with a dome over it. Right? Now, I know I see a lot of your faces like, this is what people believe? Well, that's why the Bible tell you that, if, as you can see, when shepherds were operating, it says, he sent you out as shepherds, they had this long stick with a hook over it. Because sheep just wanted, they just wanted up in anything, and here it is, there's a wolf over there, and he's wanted, the sheep want to go play with the wolf. So here it is, the shepherd would take that hook and pull them back in because you need the sheep for your livelihood. You need them to keep on going so that they can grow and now help the flock. But a sheep would just wander off. So ever so often, you've got to have that stick and bring them in and say, no, that's not the focus here. Stop looking at the flat earth. That doesn't matter. Let me bring you in. Let's, let's focus on Christ. Because this is what they have people believe now. And they believe, not on top of this, they have people believe Believing that this is some new information, it's deep. The Illuminati been hiding this from you. Now, I see y'all faces. Utterly ridiculous, right? Go on. There's ice all around the edge. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and where the ice is around the edge, I got another thing for you. That's the end of the earth. That's, that's the end of the earth, according to scriptures. That's proven. When you see end of the earth in the Bible, that's proven that that's what it's talking about. You know what? <laughs> you know what? I'm glad I got a brother. Ash is just, you know, you know one, one thing about Ryan or Ash and one thing about him? He's the guy that can actually deal with getting you from point A to point B with, without resistance in a second. <laughs> He'll resolve everything and say, here's the shortcut. Right? And I'm glad you're here. Because he said, in rational thinking, Who's sending space shuttles out into space? NASA, right? NASA. If there's a domed Earth that NASA in the, in the world powers is keeping from the people, why are they sending spaceships up? They're the ones protecting the, the edge of the ice, right? Why don't they just go straight off the edge since they know it's there? <laughs> And be in space in about a couple of seconds. If the dome is like this, why go up here? You got some space over here where you can just walk. Why don't you walk into space? Get, get yourself a thermal suit, one of those hot things, one of those thermal things, or get you a little shot. Why are you paying a hundred million bucks to have all these different pods come loose so you can shoot out there when you can just. Take two steps and walk off the dome. 
See, you you laughing, but guess what? I know people out there that are looking at this. And I know some cats out there like, yo, this is deep. Right. I know some cats out there, they, 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 they looking at this flat earth thing and saying, yo, I'm going to tell you, I got some hot news for you. I got something the Illuminati don't want you to know. Here's the map of the flat earth. And I want you to consider for a moment that you can buy airline tickets from Air New Zealand for a direct flight to Argentina. That's right, in 12 hours. Now, if Argentina and New Zealand are on the opposite sides of the earth per the flat earth map, that would be more like three days. But it's not. You can take that direct flight from New Zealand to Argentina. Go ahead, take a vacation to New Zealand and take that direct flight to Argentina on your way back. And if they can do this in 12 hours as claimed, then you have absolute empirical proof that the earth is not flat because there is no possible way they could do that on the flat earth per that map. So what are the flat earthers going to do now? Are they going to claim that when you fly off the edge of the world, you go through a wormhole and appear on the other side, and that's why Air New Zealand can make that flight in 12 hours? Well, I don't want to give them any ideas because clearly there's no lie too big for them to tell. So they're they going to go this way, all that money they have, understanding that it's a dome earth because they've been keeping it from you. But they don't just walk off the earth and go into space. Or they don't just take a shuttle with some wheels. You don't even need to go this way. You can step on that gas and just shoot, shoot right up my, out there, right? And don't tell me they can't do that on ice because they have all types of machines that they up on ice with. Don't tell me they can't have a thing where they make a roll going straight to the end of that dome and shoot up out there. But why am I putting this out there? Because the, the reason why it's funny to you all, and it's it really funny, because that's the power of philosophy. If you don't understand and have a deep foundation in scripture, they can teach you anything. And not only that, through your belief in it, you're really worshiping Satan. Here's the deep thing about it. Because this guy that brought forth the flat earth theory had a religion that he followed. Al-Biruni. And guess what religion he was following? High level Persian mythology which is Hinduism today split with Buddhist. And I noticed that all the people that are breaking, I'm talk, I ain't talking about the people that are now just being convinced. Those that are, are following it are all new ages. Those that are bringing it are all new ages. And then, then they're trying to go into Enoch, claiming they're going into Enoch to show you that Enoch, this is what they say, supports a flat earth. No, it doesn't. I'm going to, I'm going to break it down right now. No, it does not. Now, they want you to go into Enoch and try to prove a flat earth so that people can think that you... You're, that you don't know what you're talking about. And Enoch, now they're trying to discredit Enoch because we've been pointing out the fallen angels and the gods that the, the world follow, the nations follow under Enoch. They're looking to discredit Enoch with the flat earth garbage. So let's get into some substance here. Right? What religion was al -Barini? He was in the Persian mysticism. Right? Zoroastrian religion. Now, for those who went to college or who have studied in college, as a minor subject, they'll give you the option to look into these different alternative religions, and Zoroastrian is one of the highest ones from Persian mythology. Per Persian mythology is what Islam is a daughter of. It spawned Islam. That used to be the Middle Eastern religion. Now, Who is the god of the flat earth? She come in many names, but one of her names is Vishnu. Right? Let me give you a picture of her because this is going to blow you away here. Vishnu is the goddess 
where they show have the circle around her in CERN, where they have the CERN about her dealing with the will of time in front of the new satanic Babylonian CERN, which they're going to use for many things, including space travel. They have admitted they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're going to find. They don't know how many portals are going to open or what's going to come through. The actual mechanics, the nuts and bolts of what's happening, when they collide the particles and generate, let's say, 14 tera electron volts, they're actually creating enough mass energy equivalency to separate the Higgs field. Now, that's a theoretical field. When you talk about opening a portal for a picosecond, or a nanosecond or a split second that time frame is irrelevant to what is going to happen in terms of um, entities moving from another dimension into our dimension time what, is ir irrelevant right. they have openly said we don't know what's going to happen we are entering a time of entirely new physics and we are looking for parallel universes we are looking for new dimensions those are their words. Fusion scientists from all over the world have come together in ITER to build a tokamak, a fusion device that is based on the principle of magnetic confinement. The interior of a tokamak is shaped like a donut. Here, temperatures exceeding 150 million degrees Celsius force atoms of deuterium and tritium to fuse together, forming a hot plasma. The plasma must be kept in motion in the center of the chamber and away from the walls of the vessel. This is the job of the superconducting coils that surround the tokamak. With ITER, a new chapter in the book on fusion research will be opened, a book that scientists began to write some 80 years ago. This nuclear fusion reactor is also known as the Star Creator because it's designed to spark and control a self-sustaining synthetic star. The world's largest experimental tokamak reactor is currently being built by the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER. ITER is essentially the CERN of nuclear fusion and is under construction in France just less than 200 miles due south of CERN. Quote, if all goes according to plan, the most complex machine ever built will be switched on in an alpine forest in the south of France. The machine will stand 100 feet tall and it will weigh 23,000 tons, more than twice the weight of the Eiffel Tower. At its core, densely packed high precision equipment will encase a cavernous vacuum chamber in which a super hot cloud of heavy hydrogen will rotate faster than the speed of sound, twisting like a strand of DNA as it circulates. 
The cloud will be scorched by electric current, a surge so forceful that it will make lightning seem like a tiny arc of static electricity, and bombarded by concentrated waves of radiation. Beams of uncharged particles, the energy in them so great it could vaporize a car in seconds, will pour into the chamber, adding tremendous heat. In this way, the circulating hydrogen will become ionized and achieve temperatures exceeding 200 million degrees Celsius, more than 10 times as hot as the sun at its blazing core." End quote. Eater will be the hottest phenomenon in the solar system, ever. No one even knows Eater's true cost, which may be incalculable, but estimates have been rising steadily and a conservative figure rests at $20 billion, a sum that makes Eater the most expensive scientific instrument on Earth, even surpassing CERN. Similar to CERN, ITER is essentially a makeshift scientific United Nations. 35 countries, representing more than half the world's population, are invested in the project, which is so complex to finance that it requires its own currency, which is called the ITER Unit of Account. ITER's tokamak, which is hoped to be completed by 2020, will feature the largest system of superconducting magnets in the world. Aside from CERN, it is considered to be the single most ambitious, complicated, and expensive scientific engineering endeavor in human history. It is said this technology may be the answer to our pollution and energy problems, clean and renewable energy, but for those who know the true history of our scientific and technological enslavement and suppression of Tesla-based technologies, is this really the true purpose behind this endeavor? And even if there are no nefarious intentions behind it, how much risk does it really pose and is it truly safe? Aside from the similarities CERN and ITER share, they are officially in collaboration. In 2008, ITER and CERN signed a cooperation agreement. The agreement provides the opportunity for CERN and ITER to cooperate not only in the fields of technology such as superconductors, magnets, cryogenics, control and data acquisition, and complex civil engineering, but also in administrative domains such as finance, purchasing and human resources, including software programs. Director General of ITER, Konami Akita, stated, quote, The wealth of knowledge acquired by CERN over its many years of operation will make an important contribution to ITER's ability to make rapid progress, end quote. Like a perpetual sun providing renewable power for the whole world. Are you sure you could stabilize the fusion reaction? The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Hey guys, cutting the power didn't work. It's like the more we anger him, the stronger he gets. That's it. It's like one of those uh, controlled fusion devices. Um, Tokamak? Yes, exactly. And the more powerful they become, the more unstable they become. Right? And trying to look to manipulate time. Can you turn it on? And trying to manipulate time. Vishnu is the goddess of this philosophy. Right? How do we know this? Now, that's what this guy was following. This same satanic belief. Right? Here is a story, a Persian story that they have for little children. You know how if you're going to church, they give you stories on Mary, Christ, how the earth was created, and how we should acknowledge our God in the Bible. Well, they have little kid stories like that. For those that are dealing with this New Age belief, Zoroastrian belief, this Buddhist belief. And it's called the Zoroastrian creation story. Write this down. The Zoroastrian creation story. So the same way our Bible has a creation story, they, the Satanists, have a creation story too. Right? Now, in our Bible it says, in the beginning the Most High created the heaven and earth, you know, Genesis 1 and 1 and so on. Um, and then it talks about that darkness that was upon the face of the deep. We went to that in creation in the academy. Right? Last week. Right? Check how this comp actually adds into this. Of the darkness that Satan was operating with during the time of creation. Because they have a creation story too under Zoroastrian beliefs. Elder lawyer, read this little story that they have for the little girls and boys who would like to become Buddhist. 
or New Agers? Read. Okay. It says, in the beginning, there was nothing in the world except Ahura Mazda. There was nothing in the world except Ahura Mazda. You know the car Mazda? These are the, these are the spirits. They're all named after these fallen gods. And these are, now again, Vishnu is connected to these, to these names here. When you look at, because there's, there's different names depending on what part of Asia you're dealing with or Persia you're dealing with, right? It says, in the beginning there was nothing in the world except Ahuru Mazda, go ahead. The wise Lord who lived in the endless light. Who lived in the endless light. Right? Read. And the evil spirit, Aharman, who lived in the absolute darkness. The darkness. Read. Between them lay only emptiness. Between them lay only emptiness. Read. One day Ahura Mazda decided to make different creations. One day Ahura Mazda decided to make different creations. Go on. First he shaped the sky made of metal shining and bright. Go ahead. I'm going to show you where Vishnu came in. Come on. Go on. Second he made the pure water. Third the wise Lord created the earth flat and round with no mountains and Hold valleys. On. He made the earth what? Flat and round with no mountains. He made the earth what? Flat and round with no mountains. He made the earth. Hold up now. Hold up now. He made the earth what? Flat and round with no mountains and valleys. Flat and round is a Zerastrian creation of the flat earth. It's from a satanic religion where they created their own creation out of darkness. So the gods that the Most High destroyed, the flat earth is connected to them. Now I'm going to make sure all these things are posted. Hold up, finish, finish reading. Oh, let me give you a picture because you know all the children need to see the pictures of the gods they will revere for this. Right? I'm going to give you some of the pictures as we go through these gods here. Go on. Fourth, he made the plants moist and sweet with no bark or thorn. Fifth, he created the animals, big and small. Then he created the first man, Gaelnard, bright, tall, and handsome. And lastly, he created fire and disturbed it within the whole creation. The wise Lord ordered five. Go on. Ordered five to serve the mankind in preparing food and overcoming cold. The spirit peeked out of his dark world to see the wise Lord's beautiful creations. The wise Lord called him and said, Evil spirit, aid my creatures and give them praise so that you will be immortal. The evil spirit snarled. Why should I aid your creation? Go ahead. Why should I praise them? I am more powerful. I will destroy you and your creatures forever and ever. Then he crawled back into his dark side to shape demons, witches, and monsters to attack the endless light. The wise Lord, also all-knowing, he knew the evil spirit was making demons to destroy his good creations. And he also knew that there would be a great battle with the dark. So the wise Lord fashioned six spirits, the holy immortals, to guard his creation. So look at the six spirits he created to guard his creation. I'm just going to show you this. Here's a few of them. Asha Vahishtu, which goes straight to who? Vishnu. Exactly. That's the one with the wheel. You mean to tell me the Most High created her to be righteous? What they use her for CERN? She was one of the gods from Persian mythology. On and on and on. They're claiming these are the gods that the Most High made for light. When we know these are satanic Asian gods and Persian gods to be worshipped. So the flat earth has an origin. Let me show you. you want to, let me go through them again. 
So the, here, here they go. This is one of the goddesses that's being worshipped, Vishnu, that's part of CERN. That they CERN. So you think it's a coincidence, the same time they're moving CERN into this earth, which is a religious machine. You think it's a coincidence that now they're bringing out the flat earth that these gods were sent to protect, which were really demons under Satan. But under Persian mythology, they're good. Right? Now, you think they're the only ones? Well, no. Let's go back to this flat earth theory. Let's, let's go back to Wikipedia now. Read the flat earth model. It says the flat earth model is an archaic, archaic conception of the earth's shape as a plane or disk. A plane or disk, read. Many ancient cultures subscribe to a flat earth cosmography. Hold up. Many ancient cultures subscribed to a flat earth cosmography. Go on. Including Greece. Including who? Including Greece. Including the Greeks. Now, were the Greeks down with the Most High? Or were they trying to bring their own philosophies against the Most High and his people? Including the Greeks, read on. Until the classical period. Until the classical period, read. The Bronze Age and the Iron Age civil civilizations of the Near East until the Hellenistic period. India until the Gupta period. And China until the 17th century. Hold up. These are all these countries that are bringing what? The New Age, Meditation, Buddhist, Zen religion of one world. Do y'all see this? So the same time Oprah and all of them, them are pushing this new age movement, saying, well, Christ is not the only way. One of the mistakes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way to live That's and right. that we don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world that there are millions of ways to be then a human how do being you please and, God? and many ways no but many paths many to what you call God that and her crazy. path might be something else and when she gets there she might call it the light but her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her, if it brings her to the same point that it brings you, it doesn't matter whether she called it God along the way or not. And I guess the danger that could be on that, I mean, it's, it sounds great on the onset, but if you really look at both sides, I there could be possibly be just one way. What, what about Jesus? What about Jesus? And you say there isn't only one way. There is one way and only one way, and but that is through Jesus. Jesus. There couldn't possibly be with because a million you of people say in the there world. Isn't. There couldn't possibly be. Because you say, you intellectualize it and say there isn't. If no. you don't believe that, you're all buying into the lie. But that makes you right. Do you think, do you think that if you, if you are somewhere on the planet, where you so, if you're somewhere on the planet and you never hear the name of Jesus, you never hear the name of Jesus, but yet you live with a loving heart, you lived as Jesus would have had you to live, you lived for the same purpose that Jesus came to the planet to teach us all, but you are in some remote part of the earth and you never heard the name of Jesus. You cannot get to heaven, you think? And that is covered in the scriptures, too. The People are talked about Truly. that. God knows the heart. Does God care about your heart or does God care about if you call his son Jesus? Well, you know... Oprah, God, Jesus cannot come back until that gospel is preached in the four corners of this earth. So, you know, figure it out. Okay, okay, I can't get into a religious argument with you. It's not religion, Oprah. The same time they, that they've turned in CERN on, that, that is really releasing these gods that this world worships, and we're showing you one of them in front of CERN, is the same time that they're going to convince the earth the people of the earth, that the earth is flat because that's the belief that's attached with the, the fallen gods. The gods that are against the Most High Himself. Are you seeing this? So this has nothing to do with the Bible at all. But now, they're understanding that through Christianity, they have dumbed down those who are actually looking at the Bible. 
Now they can tell you anything because we haven't learned the Bible correctly. And they can convince you that it's they, they can convince you that it exists if you don't know the Bible. Like the example I can give you, right? Let me give some examples now. We, we, we're rounding it out now. Let's get, I'm going to show you now some examples, brothers and sisters. I'm going to show you now some examples. They're given the unlearned with scriptures that make them say, man, I need to look into that. Maybe the Illuminati did, the Illuminati hid it from us. I sat down with, a, with someone and talked with them for a good period of time. I'm like, okay, what I'm going to do in good earnest is you give me any scripture you want and let's read it. And let's see if we can get a flat earth from this. And not one led to no flat earth. Not one. Not one. To let you know they're targeting the unlearned with the philosophy so that you can believe in the earth that was created by the fallen gods. They're ushering in your gods that you will worship and follow. And now you must believe their creation story outside of the Most Highs. But they get you on a conspiracy side because everyone loves to be there. Oh, the Illuminati hid this from us, Paul. Man, this is some deep knowledge. When the, when the Illuminati is the one that, that had Barack Obama come out and say, and we're not going to be taking anything from these flat earth conspirators either. No problem. But I don't have much patience for anyone who denies that this challenge is real. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. They were against raising fuel standards. I guess they like gas guzzlers. They think that's good for our future. We're trying to move towards the future. They, they want to be stuck in the past. And we've heard this kind of thinking before. Let me tell you something. If some of these folks were around when Columbus set sail, <laughs> they, 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 they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. one bought that out. Why? Because he know that anyone that's against the establishment will say, hold up, flat earth, if Barack Obama is against it, we must be on a flat earth. That's where they want you. Right? Let's go to Revelations real quick and let's show you some of the scriptures they're using. And you tell me, is this saying there's a flat earth? But I'm going to use the picture that they're utilizing out there. Revelation 7 and 1, read it. Uh, Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Now hold up right there. They say, see, four corners. That's a flat earth. Now I'm going to show you an image they'll use. They'll make you think the angels are sitting on four squares of the earth. Right? Now the Bible says, through thy precept, thy get understanding, right? So let's give some understanding. It's not actually speaking of a physical square or corner. The Bible says in Psalms 119 and 104, Through thy precepts thy get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Let's get Jeremiah 49 and 36 real quick. A matter of fact, hold Jeremiah 49 and 36, right? And let's go back to Revelation 7 and 1 so we can get, get, give some understanding here. Uh, Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. Read. After these I saw, after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, 
holding the four winds of the earth. The four winds are the destruction. Read. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Read. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels. Now we know these four angels are coming from the four winds, right? You're going to find out that these are directional patterns out from the heavens into the earth. It had nothing to do with it being a flat earth with four corners. I'm going to show you this. Read. Verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, so we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now we know that these angels are not only held with the task of holding the destruction and releasing the destruction. They also are held with the task of gathering the most high's people from the destruction. Right? Let's get Jeremiah 49 and 36 to resolve this four corners of the earth. Is it talking about an actual physical corner? Read. Jeremiah 49 and 36. And upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven. From the four quarters of what? From the four quarters of heaven. It's the same thing. Four quarters. So if you take those four corners of the earth and draw a line from one angel to one angel and one angel to the other angel, you'll see four separate what? Quarters. Because these are locations where portals, they're portals from the heavens that come into the earth all around the earth. It's not saying there's four angels sitting on a flat earth, wait, or on the outside of a flat earth waiting to, to walk in or come in. It's speaking of a round sphere. That the angels travel through. So these are, these are not visible lines. They're invisible lines. Portals or what? Gates in and out of the heavens into the earth. And that's what Enoch is speaking about. Breaking them down in quarters. He's not speaking about a flat earth. How do we know this? So now that we realize the four corners of the earth... Is not four actual corners, but quarters. We can now throw out this theory I'm seeing in front of you where it shows a square and stationary earth. We can boot that out of here. That's out of here. Okay. Now, mind you, brothers and sisters, I'm only going to the scriptures that the philosophers go to to try to convince those in the Bible that the Bible supports it. Those that are bringing it know that it didn't come from the Bible. They're just looking for support out of the Bible. To draw God's people, the Most High's people, into that satanic uh, uh, thought process. Of not acknowledging the world the Most High created. But reverencing the gods who created the flat earth under Persian mythology. So I'm only going to the scriptures they use to try to support it because they know it didn't come out of the Bible. But they're looking for support out of the Bible to support it. See? I'm just I'm, I'm going to take you to the scriptures they, they take you to. Right? Here's another thing they try to use. They try to use any scripture that says the end of the earth. So if it's the end of the earth, that means it must be a flat earth. Because they, they, the Illuminati is trying to keep from you that end where the ice is around. So when you see end of the earth, that supports what? A flat earth. See? That's all the proof you need. See what the Illuminati is keeping from you? But let's see what the scriptures say when it says ends of the earth. Let's go to our curse in Deuteronomy 28. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Go on. 
The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Now we know the Most High sent the Romans or the Edomites against us from far, right? Where did they come from? They came from Rome, right? They came from Europe, right? Read. From the end of the earth. No, brother, they came from that corner with that ice cap at. From the end of the earth. No, brother, they came from the, 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 the side of the flat earth, all the way with that four angel in the corner at right there. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. That, see, they started with that angel at right there. Then they came all the way up. End of the earth means in scripture a far distance. When it says earth, when you look at the Hebrew, it's land. It's not, even, it's not even remotely talking about the shape of the earth at all in this scripture. When it says the ends of the earth. It's saying from a far land, the Most High would send a people to destroy us. How are they using this to support the flat earth? These are the scriptures they go to. Then they say, well, where in the scriptures does it support a sphere? Brother or sister, anyone out there, why is it that we are even talking about this? Everyone up until this time understood the earth was round. Now, am I agreeing with everything we see on a globe that they give us? No. Why? Because th there's lands they purposely didn't put on the globe that only they travel to on purpose. They don't want you to know there are certain places because it, that's for the elite powers. So they'll put on the earth what they want you to see on the globe. They also made England big as what? A psychological tool to make us believe that there was a lot of people in Europe. They try to make Europe almost near the size of Africa when we know it's only small. So they did that as a psychological tool. So we know that the globe and how they have the masses are not correct. But that doesn't mean the earth is not round. The Bible in creation support a round earth. How do we know this? Let's go Isaiah 40 and 22. And not just round at the top. That's semi-round. Okay? No way in scripture does it support a dome. When you look at firmament, it tells you it's a circle. That means that firmament is not just halfway. The firmament is a circumference around all of the Most High's creation within the earth. It's not a semicircle. Read it. Isaiah 40 and 22. Read it again. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. No, he's sitting on the dome of the earth. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. No, he's sitting on a half circle because it's flat. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Read. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretch that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Exactly. So the Most High used the firmament as that circle. When you look at firmament in Genesis, it, it, it links you through precepts in the scripture. So that firmament is a complete circle around the earth. Is that clear? So either you believe this in the Bible, either you believe this, or you believe the Persian religion, the satanic one world order, Buddhist and Asian new age belief of how the earth was created. Which one are you going to follow? Uh, and I don't care. And w one person said, well, listen, I've got a hundred scriptures supporting it. I'm like, give me one. I don't even need a hundred. Give me one. They, they usually try to say they got a lot. Because that's how many it's going to take for you. Somebody going to sit there until you... Sit, it's almost like torture. They're going to sit there and beat you with all these scriptures. And they, yeah, a hundred scriptures. Okay, flat earth. You, you was tortured into believing a flat earth. If the first scripture don't support it, I don't need 99 more. Okay? I can understand that you're looking at the scriptures 
flawed. You, you, you have flawed thinking. So if you're going to use that mindset with the first scripture you got wrong, then you're applying that to, every, to the rest of them. I know where the fat earth came from. It came from Persian mythology and Zoroastrian teachings of the fallen angels who created a flat earth. And here are the gods and goddesses that are reverenced and honored in Persian mythology for it. Here's the guy that was teaching it in Persia. Have nothing to do with the Bible. And here's the people who have you arguing about it. They're on both sides of the argument because they're Satanists. When I was talking with a gentleman from Belcom and, and we were discussing uh, the lie, everything he was telling me was different from what we were being told uh, was the truth. And at one point I asked him, I said, man, you guys, you, you lied about a lot, didn't you? And instantly he said, no, we didn't lie about certain things. We lied about everything. None of it was true. I really don't think people realize how deep the lie goes. Space, a final frontier. Space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. The Vector, NASA's official logo. If you've ever looked at NASA's official logo, both their, their official insignia and their official seal, you'll see that the most prominent object in the, in the seal is a, a red swooshing object. They call that the chevron or the vector. If you ask NASA's public affairs office, that this symbology is featured so heavily in their insignia and seal, they'll give you what really amounts to the, the standard facile cover story for the unilluminated. They'll tell you that that is uh, a representation of a hypersonic wing design from the 1950s, um, which was the time the logo was created. Um, not exactly the case. Um, someone might want to ask the Russian Federal Space Agency, Roscosmos, that was formed in 1992, why they chose that same logo. And while you're at it, you can go ask the Chinese, who formed their space agency in 1996, why in the world they're using a hypersonic wing design from the 1950s as their official logo. Then you can ask the Japanese, the South Koreans, Taiwanese, Malaysia, Mexico, Iran, all of these countries, even Bulgaria, they all utilize the vector symbology in their space agency logos for their, their national space agencies. Um, it gets even deeper. You can go look at the individual manned program patches for NASA. Uh, the Mercury program, for example, uh, a blatant use of covert symbology. In every logo dealing with the Mercury program, you'll see what looks like a number seven in their logo. And again, NASA's official story is that they put this number seven there so that they could pay homage to the original seven Mercury astronauts. Um, kind of forgetting the fact that only six Mercury astronauts actually flew into space because number seven never, never did. Deke Slayton had a heart problem, so he, he didn't get to go up. Uh, so there were only six Mercury astronauts. Yet there's a seven in every single logo. That's in the official mission and say or official program insignia for Mercury as well as the six individual mission patches carry this logo. And it carries on to the space shuttle program. If you look at the Apollo logo, the Apollo logo has a big letter A in it. At least that's what they want you to believe. But it's not. Again, that's just a, a simple way of explaining away the inclusion of this vector symbology in the logo. If you go to the space shuttle program, uh, the original space shuttle STS program patch is a triangular patch that, again, hides the use of the chevronic vector symbology. And that also goes for many of the STS specific mission patches. Uh, every single one of the International Space Station expedition patches carry the vector symbology. The Russian Mir Space Station used the vector symbology. That was their, their official logo. And you can even go f deeper and look at military industrial complex companies. Look at the logo on a company like Lockheed Martin, two vectors. Um, the XPRIZE logo, Ames Research Labs, US Space Command, when you get into the military realm, the United States Space Command, their official logo is the vector symbol. And when you look at the military's individual space-specific programs, all of them 
all of them deal with vector symbology and their official insignias. And the, the question really becomes, who or what are these people paying homage to? And the truth, quite frankly, is out of this world. NASA is not a scientific institute. It's a religious institute. That's every shuttle they, that they're putting out there have a god or goddess name attached to it. Apollo. And on and on and on and on. Right? How do I know the earth is round? I, I mean, I, I can't believe we even teach you this. But I have to do it, not, not for the learned people, but for the people out there that usually when they're looking for conspiracies, they run into everything and believe every conspiracy theory out there means that it's the Illuminati hiding something from them. And, and th th a matter of fact, conspiracy theory have become a religion. Where anything it seems like it's against establishment, it must be true. How do we know? How do we know? Let's get it. Let's get Job. Uh, uh, um, thirty-seven and three. Uh, thirty-seven and three. It says uh, he directeth it under the whole heaven, and is lightning unto the ends of the earth. No, I, I, I had to go to Job thirty-seven and three because. Read this. This is what they use for the ends of the earth. Read that again. Uh, he directeth it under the whole heaven and is lightning unto the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. So they'll use this scripture and say, see, he directed his lightning coming out of the heavens to the ends of the earth, proving a flat, uh, a flat earth. When it's not speaking of that, it's really speaking of what? It's speaking of it comes from a far, from a far land. That's what ends of the earth mean. It doesn't mean, but they pull this from JG flat earth. Let's get the one where it talks about in Job. Where it talks about as a stone. You got it? Uh, yeah, uh, Job 38 and 30. Job 38 and 30, read. The waters are hid as with a stone. When it says the waters are hid as with a what? As with a stone. As with a stone. What waters? It's speaking of the waters in the beginning when he separated the waters from the waters with the firmament. And that left what? That left what? Something like a what? Stone. That's not a flat earth. Read. And the face of the deep is frozen. That's how you know it's talking about the creation. Because he created the earth at where? The face of the deep. It was frozen. Why? That was before the Most High charged the center of the earth. And the waters began to recede into their place. One third earth, two thirds water. And that's why I tell you in in uh, in, in the Apocrypha that what? That it's a, it's a congealed ice. That's the ice age in science. So when the most high put a firmament around the whole earth, separating the waters from the waters, that within the earth became ice, holding all the elements for creation. So I believe that. What do you believe? Let's go, let's go to Timothy again. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. The reason they go into the scriptures is not because they want you to really follow what's in it. They want you to believe in a philosophy that's aimed towards giving credit to their gods no different than what they did when we were in Israel before they, they did all their trickery to try to for, trick us into following their gods there's no difference read it 1st uh, Timothy 6 and 20 come on old Timothy old Timothy keep that which is committed to thy trust keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane and vain babblings 
avoiding profane and vain babblings. And, and guess what? Usually I would avoid stuff like this because what? It's of no value. It's of no substance. It really doesn't add up to any level of salvation and belief and understanding of what we need to deal with. But, I, but I'm glad I did go into it because by researching it, I realized it was attached to falling gods. And our people would have stumbled into it and believed about the gods, believing the gods that created the flat earth and not the round earth like a circle. Read. In oppositions of science falsely so called. And again, the, the Bible says after the second and third admonition, one that's a heretic reject. And we've been talking about this for a while. We only got to deal with it two or, two or three times to correct somebody. So because of that, anyone that try to bring that false philosophy to our pages amongst those that are learning these scriptures and, and righteousness and try to deceive them into following the flat earth, we will ban and block you. I'm putting that out there. Okay? If it don't edify, if it's going to cause confusion and tear things apart, we don't want no part of it. You go with your Flat earth philosophy is somewhere else. So we didn't gave the admonition, which means we're putting this video out not to debate. We're putting the video out to warn you that these are the gods you're following if you're dealing with the flat earth. And if anyone try to bring anything else because the scriptures the people are bringing, you know, and here it is before I end this. Guess another scripture they brought, Lloyd. And it, it was dropping top knowledge that the Illuminati don't want you to know. Hmm. That when Satan took, took uh, Christ to that high pinnacle, that mm -hmm. mount, and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth, in order for him to see that, it had to be a flat earth, brother. See, the Illuminati didn't want you to know that, brother. Sitting there, I'm, I'm dropping some knowledge. You hear him saying that, Lord? <laughs> That was one of the scriptures. I, I was answering them one at a time, and then I realized, then, then I get like Shapat. One day, because Shapat be answering some of the email, and then Shapat, Shapat came to a point where, I'm like, brother, we, we behind on some of the uh, emails, brother. Uh, what's going on? Come up, and you know, he come out of the room, that's when you know he's, we, we was all together and all that. You know, Shapat, frustrated, veins coming out of his neck and everything. And I'm saying, brother, brother, what's going on? Are you all right? And Shapat say, listen, bro, uh, I, I'm like, let me see, what, what, what's going on with the email? And he says, I want you to see something. He showed me him answering one person on an email. And it, it probably had about 15 pages on it of him pasting scriptures and all. Now Shapat to the point where, when, when it's foolishness, he'll say, listen, I just sent the scripture. And they, one, one, one response he sent back now, it said, No. <laughs> Let that sit on that. You can't even take him there no more. He was so frustrated because these people, if they believe something, they're going to send you scriptures that don't have nothing to do with it. And here it is. You got people that really need the attention. Right. And, and, and now these people that don't want to believe the truth, it's going to be just sitting there sending you stuff and sending you stuff and you bombarded with them because they don't want to accept it. They've already been convinced in their own mind it's true. That's why the Bible give you a number on that. He said after the second or third ammunition, one who's a heretic, reject. You don't have to feel that you are letting our people down by telling them, I don't have no time for your foolishness no more. I didn't, I didn't sit back two responses to you. The third one is, for you Christians, you're going to love this, is grace. After the third one, you're not going to get another response trying to bring something, another philosophy. That's following the Bible. Because if we spend this time on this mess, then we'll, that's time we could have been spending on something that could have edified and helped the church and helped the people who really need it. I'm like, man, what's it? I'm like, why are you going back and forth with this person? And then that's when I, I, I shut the pot down and say, you see that second and third ammunition right there? You, you don't need to go back and forth. This person ain't going to see it. 
Not only that, not, not on top of the Bible scriptures, they'll start bringing secular information from someplace you didn't know existed to send you all this stuff. One email, you understand, you know how when you scroll with the two fingers, you, you have to push that thing like four or five times up to get through the whole email. I'm like, brother, we ain't going to get no emails done like this. So, so it's, it's the philosophies that we must stay away from and deal with only the doctrine of edifica edification, to edify. Because you have some people who only, their whole existence is to debate and fight and go back and forth. This is, this is how they exist. And, and guess what? This is what the internet creates. It creates that. We're not dealing with it. So that's it on the flat earth. There's no one in our church teaching it. Okay? At all. Anybody come with that flat earth, I'm going to show them that they, they can join this guy, this, this, this cat's church here. What, what's his name again? Uh, Al Baruni. Al Baruni. They, they got a church called Al Baruni. Right there. Anyone that want to follow Al Baruni's doctrine, you're more than welcome. And then you can go next to CERN right here to Vishnu and, and get you know and give her her credit you know give, give her the opportunity to feel your, your spirit okay with that we're going to say shalom and uh, we're going to answer a few questions and pray out and wish you all Godspeed